Hi, welcome to this Programming for Cultural Heritage demo video. We're going to be looking at the Google Places API today. Um, so the goal of this video is just to kind of get uh, familiar with the API, the Google um, Places API, and understand how we could potentially use it for one of our projects. So the API is basically the data that um, underpins Google Maps places. So when you're like on Google Maps and you look at a, a restaurant or something like that, this data supposedly you know is in this API and and you have access to it. Um, so you have various endpoints that you could use this for. Um, one of the things that we uh, were thinking about it for one of the projects in our class was using it potentially to get um, a status of a of a business. Um, during, you know, if it's closed, if it's open, permanently closed, etc. So kind of the goal of this video is to see if we can use the API to locate some businesses and then get some details about that business to see if it's actually open. So it has a few API endpoints. It has a places search and a places detailed and places photos. So it seems like places search and places details are probably going to be along the lines of what we're interested in to kind of get some details about certain um, businesses and uh, get some more data about them using the details if we need to. Um, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is do um, a place of search and kind of figure out how to, how to use this. Um, so basically it's saying, all right, so you have this uh, API endpoint. And so you know we've talked about APIs before. Every API has a, a, a specific endpoint, a URL, that points to um, a specific function of that API or, or data that could be returned. And so in this case, the, the places search, find places API endpoint is um, slash maps, API place, find place from text, output, and parameters. Um, so you need to pass it some required parameters to so the key, so your application API key. So we need to authenticate, right? So we need to find our key, get our key somehow. And then input uh, text that identifies a search lo target location, such as name, address, or phone number, the input must be a string, non-string inputs such as lat long coordinates or plus code generates an error. Uh, and then the input type can be either text query or phone number. So this looks like if you're looking for a specific business, like a specific address or name, you can put that in there or even their telephone number and it would return um, you know, a search result. And so the whole point of this is that, you know, every one, each one of these places in this API have their own identifier, their place ID. And so we need to find out what that internal identifier is so that we can ask um, more for more information about it, right? So these identifiers for different place IDs look like something like this. You know, there's just these alphanumeric uh, IDs that represent that, un uniquely represent that business or place. Um, so what we need to do is basically uh, try to pass uh, a search parameter to this endpoint to see if we can get some stuff back. So in our case, we're kind of more interested in, um, we don't have a specific business that we're interested in. We're more interested in like a certain location or general location. So um, let's look at some of the other optional parameters we can pass. Um, so we can do language, we can do fields. So that's basically what fields you want to return back. Um, and the location bias. So this is prefer results in a specific area by specific eating uh, radius, slat long, or pairs. If this parameter is not specified, the API uses IP address basis by default. All right, so this basically is re returning kind of a, um, a search um, result based on, it takes your search string, and it converts it into like a geospatial query and it looks for that thing, a business in the area. And then you can pass it this like location bias to be like, you know, I'm actually actually interested in, in this kind of point uh, around this area. Um, and it says, if you don't provide this, it'll just use your IP address for this bias um, filtering. So it means that like, if my IP address is coming from New York City, then it would probably use the addresses in New York City as a bias before it looked in, you know, uh, you know, Seattle, Washington's for that address. So you can kind of like override this by saying, you know, don't use my IP address location, um, which is pretty rough. Use actually uh, a point in, in place. So I don't, I'm not sure how we'll, how this can work, but let's start with the idea that we'll say, okay, let's give it like a cross street, like a two cross streets in New York, and we'll give it a um, bias of that, uh, I, the lat long for that cross street and we'll see if we can get any results back from the API. All right, so I think we kind of have a strategy set first here, but we need to make an API key to get ready. 
Um, so if you if you look, if you look, watch the um, Google Sheets demo video, um, we we go through the same process where you need to get an API key for your project. So let's go through that process again. So basically, um, uh, you uh, there's like a there's like a major there's like a central Google API hub, and basically you um, have a project, and then you can turn on certain APIs for that project. So I'm going to make a new project. Um, I'm going to call it. Uh, oh, I only have a certain number of projects allowed. So you might want to be uh, uh, economical with the number of projects you start. But I'm going to make one called, called PFCH, uh, and break that. All right. So I turn. I created that project, and I'm going to uh, select that project. Um, by going up here and then selecting it here. Oops. All right. All right, so now it's that project selected and I'm going to turn on the APIs for um, um, basically turning on the APIs for this project. So I'm going to uh, enable APIs and services. So I'm going to look for places. Uh, so here's a Google API, Google Places API. I'm going to turn that on. Enable. And so this will kind of enable that certain specific API for this project. And then we get a, we get the key for this project. And then we use that key for our requests that we're going to be making. Um, so now we need to get our keys for this. And it, you know, we could, it also be interesting to see how much this costs, right? How much, because it's not, it might not necessarily be a free API. So we'll say Google um, places API pricing. Um, so it's like pay as you go, right? And so let's just see. So it looks like they break it down to, um, you know, the number of, of, you know, per calls, how much it costs per um, number of calls. So, so basic category included the base base cost places or uh, requests and do not re result in any additional charges. The basic data SK is triggered when any of these fields are requested. Address business status. That's what we're interested in. Format, geography, that kind. So these are basic um, prices. So if we do up to 100,000 per month, then it is free, looks like. So, you know, you'd have to dig into this pricing a little bit more to see exactly what that means. If there's like a free range or like a free tier of like how much um, you use per month, um, it seems like it's not expensive <laughs> or not doesn't cost anything you'd have to kind of make sure double check that but you know you'd want to just before you start using the api just go to the pricing page and make sure it's not like super expensive for what you, what you wanted to do um because you don't want to get a surprise bill right and so that i should add you know i i effortlessly clicked into this this api um council and, and dashboard and made a project and all that but i already have a google account and i've already like added my credit card to the api google account so it knows you know how to charge me if there is a charge um but there shouldn't be a charge for this since we're we're going to be using such a low amount of calls all right so now that we have um our project we turn on the key or we turn on the um, places api for that and we need to um, get an API key. Uh, so we need to uh, remember to configure OAuth consent screen with information about your application. Let's do that first in case it doesn't complain about that. Um, it's going to be internal or external. So let's copy a ch demo. Uh, this is my support, no logo. 
um, pfch.myc. Um, we need to include https pfch.myc. Um, pfch myc i'm not sure if this is all necessary you could just use an example domain um if you wanted to and then this is my all right so i'm just so it doesn't complain about that uh so i don't need any scopes um all right so Credentials. I'm not sure if you needed to do that to get a credential, but it's okay. So I'm going to create a new IP API key, create credential, and we're just going to create a new API key. So this is the API key that I would include in the calls to the to the API. And so of course, only I should know this. You now are seeing this, so I'll delete this later. But this is like the key that I would use for these um, requests. All right. So now that I have the the API key, I can move on to the next thing where we're actually going to be creating these calls and making these calls to the API endpoint. So let's go over to our um, code and make a new file. So I'm going to save this file in my downloads directory. I'm just going to call it places.py. Um, so we know we're going to be using uh, requests. Um, which is a mod, uh, Python module to make interacting with APIs and, and the internet in general uh, easier. And there's a whole video about using requests. So if you haven't used that before, you can go check that video out. And then the other thing we have so far is the API key. So we'll set that in a variable. All right, so now let's go back to the documentation and find this places endpoint that we're gonna start using. Um, so this is the base of the endpoint. Um, output may be either the following values, so JSON or XML. So this would be JSON, and then this is this is the whole URL, the base URL. So we'll define that in our code. And we just need to change the output to json that's what it said this could be json or xml the documentation say so we're going to say json and that's the url and then we're going to have a um, parameters and this is a dictionary of key value pairs for a parameter and what we're going to look for and so we need to kind of figure out what we're going to pass to it and what is required and so the key we got that we got to put that in there so let's put that in there so we know our key is going to be equal to our key here. And then we also need to send it some input and then an input type. So these are required. So the input type can either be text query or phone number. And then the input is the search value. Um, all right, so let's do the input type is going to be text query. Text query, that's just like a constant keyword they defined for their API. And then the uh, input is going to be what we're going to be searching for. So this is going to be the search parameter. We don't know what that's going to be yet. And then we know that the, is, there's going to be we don't know what fields we really want yet, so we're going to ask for all of them. Um, and location bias. Um, so we know that this is going to have to be a lat long pair. So we want to make sure that like we're pointing it in the right direction. We're kind of just like giving like a search place and then being like, and this is where you should be looking. So let's add there that there. So this should be this. And the format says in the documentation, it should be in the format point lat long as a string. So this obviously need to be changed, but that's what we're looking for. All right, 
So then we would make the request. So we say our request.get, and then we give it the URL that we're going to use. And we're going to give it the um, parameters. And then we'd have um, some result in the text result. So the first thing now we need to do is figure out where we're going to be searching for, right? So let's um, let's just pick a random place in, uh, say, uh, Midtown Manhattan, and give that give it that cross streets. Um, so let's look in Midtown. Um, so say we're interested in, uh, say, restaurants or play, yeah, restaurants around West 39th and 6th Avenue. Um, so maybe our um, our string could be. Let's see what the the address is here. Um, so this is, we could say. I copied this address here, so let's uh, we're gonna go West 39th Street and Sixth Avenue. So we're gonna say uh, West 39th Street, um, I'm gonna say, yeah, West 39th Street, and I'm not sure, Sixth. Avenue, New York, New York, and then the zip code. So that's like the search query we're going to pass to it. And so that's the search query is going to go in there. It's 39th Street. Oops, that's better. West 39th Street and 6th Avenue, New York, New York, 1001, whatever. And then this location bias is the... Um, we want to tell like search right here. And so if I, when I right clicked on it, I got this coordinates and um, I'm hoping that's lat long in the format they uh, are asking for. So then I just paste that there. And then I have like the, the location bias is the lat and long. Yeah, all right. So who, no clue if this will work or not, right? So let's give it this information and see what the API sends back to us. I'm going to save this, go to my terminal, go to downloads, I'm going to say Python three places. Um, all right, it says you must enable billing on the Google Cloud project. <laughs> all right, so I, I didn't turn on billing for this project. So I need to go turn on billing. So I'm going to pick this PFCH. I'm going to add um, my billing account and set this. All right, so I've, I've reached a limit of projects in which I can enable billing on. So I created a new project and I enabled billing and it didn't work so request quota blah okay all right so i'm going to um enable billing on this and then get the api key and keep going uh so we're right back okay so i enabled the billing and i got um the api key working so now the should work at least should request to the back end and, and do something so let's try running it again and seeing what happens all right, so it basically returned a places ID for our search. We gave it basically like a cross street and a location that it should search in. And it gave us this, basically it found one place. Um, so looking at the um, documentation, you can actually um, uh, tell which fields you should include in, in the return. And so the, some of the fields are 
address, name, and geometry. So um, there's some other, other ones like business status and stuff like that. So let's just at least include the name uh, and a um, business status and stuff like that. So this is going to be another one of our key, uh, uh, parameters. So we're looking for fields, and the field should be uh, in a certain format, comment formatted. So we know we're going to have um, basically, let's do name. And these are keywords that get, they give us, right? Business status, um, formatted address and um geometry it's like it's like um that long probably um types I'm not sure what types are sounds good place id all right so let's try running this again now that we're saying um return certain fields back to us please and i need to end it with a comma there All right, let's try running this again. All right, so basically um, <laughs> it returned us, it found this, it found it as an intersection. And so its name is Sixth Avenue, West 36th Street. So this endpoint is basically trying to if you if you know exactly what you're looking for, right? And you know exactly what you're trying to find, like a business name or something like that. This seems like the endpoint you'd want to use. But let's go back to the documentation. There might be another endpoint because this is not doing what we want it to do, right? Um, so this might be more of our alley near, nearby search requests. So nearby search lets you search for places within a specific area. Um, you can refine your search request by supplying keywords or specifying the type of place you're searching for. This sounds much more what we're up to. So let's do, um, we, have, we have to replace the nearby search um, in our code. So find place from text is going to be nearby search now. And then uh, same thing as before with the JSON. The key is the same. Location is now different, so the latitude and longitude around which the received the place information must be in the format as latitude longitude, comma, longitude. Define the radius in meters within to which in the search results. Maximum allowed radius is by 50,000 meters. Um, uh, note, radius must not be included if rank by distance is passed. All right, so now we need location and radius. Um, So let's do that. We're going to go um, fields will probably stay the same. Input type, we don't have that anymore. So we're going to do um, location is the next is the next key we're going to do. And that's going to be latitude and longitude. So we'll just take the one that we had from before and pop that in there. We don't have location bias anymore. Now we have key, location, fields. We still want certain fields returned. Input is not a thing anymore in this new API, um, but we do want to include radius in meters, and it says the max is 50,000, so let's do that. Let's do the max. Radius is 50,000. And then let's see what else about this API we can do. Optional parameters, keyword. Um, Language, max, min, price, name, open now, rank by, type. Restricts results to places matching specific type. Only types may be specified. Only one type may be specified. Uh, so here's a list of supported types. We're particularly, in just in this demo, we're interested in restaurants. So um, let's see if there's like a restaurant type. There's a restaurant. There's probably other stuff like cafe, maybe. Yeah. All right. Let's say we're just interested in restaurants. So we're going to use the restaurant type. 
So that needs to that needs to live in the the uh, type parameter, and then there's a page token. Return up to twenty results from a previous run search. Setting a page token parameter will execute a search with the same parameters used previously. Um, so it doesn't say exactly um, like how do you do pagination, right? If there's more how, or how many results are returned. But let's try it. Let's see if we get any results back. So then we need to do type and it's going to be a restaurant. All right. All right, let's see if we get any hits here. Um, all right, so we got All right, so there is a next page token. So if you have multiple pages, so it looks like it's returning a certain number of these. For example, here is the name of this place. Here is the name of this one. Low hotel, lots of hotels. So we gave it a place as um, type should be restaurant. So if we look in here, there should be type. Yeah, so it's a hotel, but it still has food apparently. So what's this one? A sushi place. All right, so it, you know it returned a bunch of of results. So you could potentially, um, you know, issue this next page token, and then that would run the search for the next page. Supposedly, let's see if it says about the next page token. Uh, will contain a token that can be used to return up to 20 additional results. The next page token will not be returned if there is no additional results to display. The maximum number of results that can be returned here is 60. There is a short delay between when next page token is issued and when it will become valid. So you can really only do up to 60 um, results using this next page token. So if you wanted to do this and you know if 50,000 meters within a certain area, that's a pretty big area. Um, so you might want to reduce the, the meters down to a certain more chunk size, right? If you're searching for a certain area. Um, but so what we can do is basically if you're looking for um, restaurants that are and their upper their status, right? So we'd want to basically, this is the search request that's going to get us started. And then we know, um, we know we probably want to import JSON because we're going to use JSON to do something with it. And we're going to say data equals JSON.loads and we're going to pass the r.txt to it. So now it's JSON data, or now it's a Python dictionary, excuse me. And what we can do is um, let's just loop through these and print the name out just so we get some experience with that for restaurant in data. And if we look at the results again, we know that there's a dictionary here. The it lives in a page called results or key called results. And then there's things like business status and name underneath of there. And then there's page, next page token. So this lives under so it's data results, and then we can print restaurant and the, um, I think it's called business status, and then also the name. So print restaurant name, 
and then comma business status. Um, so let's see what that does. All right. Yeah, so I mean, you could potentially do this. So the, the limiting thing here is that they're only going to give you 60 total and there's 20 in each request. So you can do the request um, two more times, right? And so you could get up to 60 things. But in, in a place like Midtown, there's going to be, you know, in 50,000 meters, that's a lot, right? So um, you could, let's like reduce this from 50,000 meters to like 5,000 meters and see what it says. All right, so at least now we saw, see there's some uh, some other values for this closed uh, or the business um, status, right? We see some closed temporarily ones. Let's see where this is, Carmine's Italian restaurant. Let's see how close we are. So we give it like this intersection and it returned that one that's way up here. So yeah, yeah I don't know if that's 5,000 meters. I guess it could potentially be that far. So yeah, so you could potentially use this to return like you could you could have like a list of intersections, right? If you're if you're trying to like gather some information about restaurants in a certain geographic location, you could kind of have like a list of flat and longs you'd want to hit and then pull in all those pieces of information, right? Because these IDs are unique, so you wouldn't um, necessarily, it doesn't matter if you're duplicating the IDs, it would still, they'd still be there, right? So what you could do is, um, Let's try to um, get the next page working, right? So that is going to live in this next page. Um, next page. Results. So I think you can send it. Um, this next page, for example, the query below. We search for restaurants near Darjeeling Harbor in Sydney, Australia. Rank them by distance, and you can see the response can hit the next page token property. Okay, so yeah, that's what we have. To see the next set of results, you can submit a new query by passing the results of the next page token to the page token parameter so basically you just say page token and then you pass the, the the page token and of course your key api key so let's try to get get that working so we know that um the um Next page token is going to be in data, and then it's next page token. Let's just print that out to make sure that's right. Yep, there it is, right? And then if we wanted to make the request again using this, we would just say we'd have to define a new payload or new params. And the key is still our key, but then we have um, a page token, which is going to be our next page token. And then we just do the request again. And then we 
do this again. And we could do this part again. So let's print a line between those two. So we'll say print. So, we should, so we're going to like do two requests here and hopefully continue on based on our results. Yeah, right. Close temporary. Close temporary. So we would um, we could potentially do this three times, right? And you could do like a for loop or something, but we'll just duplicate the code um, and see it work again. All right, so it doesn't, so it seems like it didn't return more information because of this stuff repeating, right? It did say that there's like a short delay from when it's issued to when it's available. So I just, I'm just curious, we could import the time module and do like a little sleep in between each one of these. So we could say time.sleep and just sleep for one second in between each request. I, I don't think this will matter because, you know, it's, it's not, we're not going, we're not hitting the API that fast. Yeah, so it's still, oh, I think I know what I, we did wrong, right? So in the URL, we, get, we made a new variable called new params. And so we'd have to pass that new params. We're just basically doing the same request over and over again. That's why it was identical results. All right, all right, so let's try it again. So we might see some different results now. All right, so basically there were no additional results past the 20 because it didn't give any, there was no more pages after it. So I think this gets towards a little bit of what we'd want to do, right, is to um, basically search for an area or something. Let's, let's up the, the limit to a higher amount again back up to 50,000 and see if it has meant more than one page then. Huh, yeah, so let's, what we can do is we can make it print out the, um, the text here, right? So this is the first request and it, that usually works. Then this is the second request and what we can do is let's just like print out the the, ta the results from it, the r.txt before we turn it into JSON. And let's do that again um, I, after we do the request again here. So we'll see we'll see what actually is coming back from the API. All right. So the request itself was invalid. It doesn't tell me why it was invalid. So what we can do is just double check the, make sure this page token is the right thing. Cause we know that's correct. So let's go back to the documentation. It says requesting the next page before it is available will return invalid request. So that's what we're seeing here, invalid request. So um, maybe we need to wait longer between the requests. Maybe this is like a um, like a little security thing they put in place so you can't scrape as fast or um, get as as results as quickly as you might need. So let's we could try. We'll sleep for 
five seconds in between each request. Okay, so one second was not enough. So this must be a security thing they put in place to try to limit you from getting a lot of data back at once. I'm not sure why they would do that. It might actually be a technical limitation like for this for that identifier to populate their system and, and register, but I, I doubt that. Um, all right, so let's drop this location distance back down to like 5,000 meters instead of 50,000. Yeah, so, you know, there's there's a bunch of, of results. So the last thing we can do is like, let's um, let's like turn the script into something that we could like kind of canvas an area, given a bunch of different um, lat, 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 um, sorry, um, lat, latitude and longitude positions, like uh, try to canvas an area and return back information. So what we can do is first we need to store this information as opposed to just printing it out to the screen. And so the, the kind of order of operations here is important because the first kind of request kick, we kick off gets the next token to keep that search going. And so um, I wonder what happens if we did it again. Because it says it won't do it won't do more than sixty. I wonder what it tells you if you try. Yeah, so there's not even a token there. So it that is a hard limit there. All right, so got rid of that. So let's see what we can do. So we want to save this information out to our data. Save somewhere, you know, save it for later, right? So let's make like a, a key here, a new list, or sorry, a new dictionary. We'll call it like um, my data or something, or all data. We're gonna make that into a, like a dictionary. And so this dictionary is gonna have. Let's have it like. So this will be the key, and then this will be the data. So for each one of the Google Place keys, we'll slot into this into this dictionary. And if there's a duplicate, it will just overwrite what's there because the keys are unique. And it won't like, you know, it won't there won't be duplicates in our data because each key is unique. And so if we say store this at this ASCF again, it will just overwrite what's there and it won't doesn't care, right? So we have this empty data there. And so we have um, for each one of the results, we probably also have um, Let's just print out the restaurant again, just to see what keys we have again. This is what we have in everything. All right. So this is each one of the results. There's business data that we've been using, geometry. We're looking for this key that is probably unique here. Let's print out the r.txt before it does that. So we'll just so it's coming back from the server pretty well formatted. So let's just print it out before we, it's kind of hard to read in this format. All right, so business status, icon, name, place ID. All right, so there it is. So we have place ID. So we can store each one of these results in its own place ID in our code. So place ID would be referenced like this. So what we can do, right, is basically say, okay, all data, and then the key for our Python dictionary will be the place ID, and we'll just make it equal to the restaurant. That's basically all we'll do for, for it. And then we'll just do the same for each one. 
each of our three for loops because we can do it up to three times. And then we also want to um, basically make sure that the next token key exists before we try to do another one because it could be the case where like that there is no third page of data because it's only so many things within that radius. So what we could do is we could say, um, put each one of these in its own little if statement. So we could say if is in the data, then do all of this. Otherwise, don't even try it, right? We'll do the same thing for this. Um, and we'll actually move the sleep and stuff inside of the if statement so that like we don't wait five seconds if there's no token to wait for, right? So we'll just do this here again. So if there if it is there, then sleep and then make the request again and save the data. All right. So then at the end, what we could do is um, JSON dot dump uh, the all data. We're going to put it into a new file called all data dot JSON. We'll call it places dot JSON. We're going to open that for write mode, and we're going to um, indent it. See if this works. So it's waiting these five seconds. And you could probably play around with that five seconds to get it down further just to see if it what the limit is, right? It might be two seconds would work, it might be one second or three seconds would work. But we already know that one second is definitely not enough time for it to work. Um, and so this is what that file looks like. So basically, it, it's a big Python dictionary with the keys being the places ID. And so let's see how many we got in here. We should have 60. Yep, and there's 60 matches to that string. So there's 60 of these in here, and yeah. So what you could do, right, is if you had a bunch of latitude and longitude, you could store those separately right so you could say um search uh lat long and make this a list and right now this is our location our current location but then i could go through let's like let's go back and i could go through and you know put pick a different intersection down here and copy these coordinates and this from this intersection. So now I would have two sets of, um, sorry. So now I would have, if I go back to my code, I could add those in and I could have two sets of coordinates. So now what I could do is I could make a new for loop for chords in lat long and indent everything underneath of there. And every place I want to use my chord chords, now the, since it's a list, each each one of these loops chords will actually be a pair of these lat longs. So I could replace that here. And that's the only place we need to put it is in the initial search. So now that it's there, I'm going to be searching basically two locations in this intersection and then, then also this intersection. But it's going to be adding the data together and so it's not going to, um, it doesn't matter if they, you know, overlap and they find overlapping things because it would um, basically just, the key would be overwritten with its own key. And so the data would just be overwritten with itself. So we could see how many unique things. So you would imagine there might be some overlap because I didn't pick something too far away. So if we look at this data, and it ran. Let's see how many come up here so there's 61 so it basically was a huge overlap of data um, you probably want to pick you know you probably want to pick uh, or set your search place um, for example so set this down further right so set this down to like even like 500 meters right and then set the next lat long at least 500 meters away from there so i wonder if this would do any better 
So this is all like based on the idea that we don't know the names of the places we're searching for. If you had a, a list of names of restaurants, for example, and you kind of knew that where they're supposed to be located, then you could totally use the other endpoint to do this, right? So for example, if you use the open uh, NYC data portal had like a list of restaurant inspectors, inspections or something like that, and you had the names of the restaurants and their locations or addresses, you could plop that into there and know exactly. So you wouldn't be relying on the API to return like locations. You'd already know that this thing exists. I'm just trying to find it. In the in your API, so let's look at the results for this one. Yeah, so now there's 90 results in here. So we we made the radius much smaller, and then we added the there's two locations, two points. So it found you know many more restaurants because the search is so much smaller, the radius is so much smaller. So, you know, you could potentially canvas a certain neighborhood, right? If you picked a bunch of lat longs and had the radius small like this and just kind of go through and you'd potentially find all the um, information for all the restaurants or all the whatever type you could you wanted to search for, right? Um, I think the limitation for this API is you can only have one type. So you could run this again for um, cafes, for example, if you wanted restaurants and cafes. So let's see if we can find... There's any closed permanently. It doesn't look like there's any closed permanently, but these closed temporarily might be interesting data research. So I think that's it's a good way to get started. Uh, the link to the code uh, will be in the comments here. Um, you just need your own uh, API key to get started. Um, so with this code, you could potentially kind of canvas an area and build up this little data set of restaurants or whatever businesses that you change this type to, to what you're looking for. Um, so yeah, this, this API, Places API is definitely useful, right? And there's a couple of endpoints we didn't explore, um, but we kind of looked at using the, if you knew the name of the restaurant or the place of business, you could you know pay, load up the, the information about it that way. And then using this kind of like canvassing area, you could kind of potentially canvas a large area of, of geography um, and kind of building up your own local cache of information to do research with. So thanks for watching and um, I will talk to you later, bye.